YouTube, it's Missy, and today I'm here to share with you guys a review of the cutest middle grade books. Um, I've already done a review on the first book. I think I did it last year. I will leave the link down below for that video, but today I'm going to be talking about Egg Marks the Spot, the sequel to Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake and pictures by John Classen. Both of their Instagram um, channel handles things <laughs> will be down below. Um, just to let you guys know that even though that this is a series, this can be read as a standalone. If you pick up Skunk and Badger first, you get... Um, you know, the backstory of who Skunk and Badger are, but you don't necessarily need the first one in order to read Egg Marks the Spot. Now, I want to first say thank you to Algonquin YA readers um, for sending me this copy of this arc. Um, just like last time, I will be giving this one away. Um, so if you are interested in middle grade books, um, leave me a comment down below saying you'd like to enter into this giveaway and I will be sending one lucky person a co this copy, this exact <laughs> arc that I got because I am definitely wanting the hardcover of this book. So with that being said, I did look up this book on Amazon and it is between the um, years, well, grades of two and five. Looking at the the words of this book and, um, you know, just working in the school district, this is a very high level second grader if they can read this because one, just, just one of the things that Badger says, if you can read that, it says Badger huffed Precambrian Stromal, Strom, 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 I can't, I can't even read it. Strom, Stromatolites, Stromatolites <laughs> are living rocks, rocks made up of this cyanobacteria that secrete lime. Okay, so that's just one sentence from this, um, from the story. So if you have a very high level, um, second grader, that can read these big giant words, I am so proud of you <laughs> and your kid is amazing. Um, but also this can be read at fifth grade level as well. This is a Lexile score of, I think it said 570 L. I don't know what the L stand for. Maybe that is Lexile. But there's also other letters too. So I'm not positive on how the whole Lexile score works, but um, that was just an example of just one of the sentences from the story. So what this book is about is about Skunk and Badger. Now, they have been roommates for a while now. Badger is a somewhat of a geologist. He doesn't study all rocks, uh, and he doesn't study like the... Um, what am I trying to say? I can't, I can't, I, I don't know. I, I was trying to think of like the different layers of earth. Um, so he likes to study rocks and minerals. And when he does his very important rock work, he likes to scream that if it's a rock or a mineral, because there's two different kinds. A rock can be made of minerals, but a mineral cannot be made of rocks. I think that's how it goes. But it talks about all of that in the book. Now, when we first um, start reading this, Badger's in his rock room, and he's doing really important rock work, and Skunk is bugging him. And when the door's closed to Badger's rock room, he expects silence and for him to have privacy, and he doesn't want to be bugged. And Skunk's like, but I have lunch. <laughs> Badger's like, okay, 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 hold on. Because you have lunch and it's getting cold, you may enter my rock room. While Skunk is in the room, he notices that there's this really nice rock wall 
in the room and each section of the rock wall has a little stand on it with a particular um, rock or geode or what have you on the, uh, the, the stands and there's like these little lights and so it's like this really pretty presentation and Skunk realizes that the A stand is missing its rock slash mineral and Badger has to tell him the story about why it's missing um which i i i felt like oh my gosh we have a really good villain we have this this mean cousin of badger who's a weasel his name is fisher and he takes the rock in spite like they were at a family reunion he doesn't like badger he especially doesn't like the fact that aunt lula likes badger more so he takes his agate and it's his favorite because it's a spider eye agate or at least that's what badger calls it and that is the you know this is what's driving the story so skunk decides to be a really good friend and he says you know what we need to fix this. You're missing the A on your rock wall. Let's go on a rock expedition and find you a new agate. Who cares about your cousin? Maybe we'll find a better one. And that really pumps up Badger. He's like, oh, okay, I wanna do that. I wanna go on this rock expedition. And you know what? I found this agate, or the one that my cousin stole, at Endless Lake, at campsite number five. And I love that campsite, and I haven't been there in forever, and I need to do this. And so they get packing. Um, I love, because I am an avid camper. I also um, love hiking, and my husband is obsessed with backpacking, so we have some of the equipment that Badger talks about, like the titanium um, pots and pans, or the titanium cups like everything has to be light everything has to be weighed so that way it not only does it fit in the backpack but it's not too heavy so that way you can go on your hikes and badger knows this he's an expert but poor skunk he wants to bring his cast iron pan and um all of these other utensils for cooking and so much food. he has a five pound bag of flour and Badger is freaking out. He's like, you, you're gonna carry all this? Have you even tried to put the backpack on? <laughs> so funny. I love the way they play uh, uh, off each other. Badger's a very serious animal and Skunk is every, you know, he's light and carefree and, and he just goes with the flow. And so they have a very good yin and yang dynamic. Again, in uh, the first book, Skunk and Badger, I talked about how it kind of reminds me of Frog and Toad from when I was really little. Now, it's the complete opposite. They're, they're on two different spectrums. Frog and Toad kind of just hang out together. Um, whereas, you know, it, Skunk and Badger, they're dealing with more um, social issues and, and other things that we um, deal with in society today, which I really enjoyed. Also, uh, this particular book, I don't remember it being so prevalent in the first one, but this one has a lot of sound effects. My favorite word, onomatopoeia, right? <laughs> we learned that, or at least I teach it in third grade. It is a word that says, uh, the sound snap is onomatopoeia. You, you see the word snap, you can hear the word snap. Bang, pow, crack. There's a lot of these words in here. So you know what's happening. You know how it sounds when Badger is um, walking through the forest or how Skunk is hopping around. I loved that about these books because you if, if you like to read stories out loud to your children like I do, um, it just makes the story more fun to read. And also, if the child's reading it on their own, they get a better visual of what the story might look like if they were playing it in their head or watching it on a movie. So I really enjoyed that part. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the fact that there is 
two um, things in here and I might be a little bit um, I'm loving going back to school right now and so we just learned in our textbook because I'm going to get my credentials uh, about on unconscious bias and that is um, when you bring a, a bias or a prejudice into whatever you do in life and you don't realize you're being prejudiced so at one point um, Badger is like that so Badger talks about um, rats right there's there's these rats that come into this cave and he's like oh no rats and skunk like there's nothing wrong with rats and he's like but rats are disgusting he's like but skunk saw I used to be friends with rats and he's like you used to live under a bridge or under a dumpster and skunks like yeah and so you're having like this prejudiceness of of these rats and how they had to like scrape to get by and how skunk used to live like pretty pretty poorly um and then there's another portion where uh skunk says hey badger i'm gonna have the mussels from endless lake help move our stuff back home and badger's like how they're so small they have no muscles and <laughs> skunk's like but they have this business card and that's what they do and that's their job and badger can't understand it because he hasn't seen it done he he has this preconceived notion that muscles are small and, and they can't lift anything and i mean they don't even have hands like how is this possible and skunk's like just let it be like just just uh think about it imagine it go with it you know what i mean it, it'll be fine and so i really like that because even though it's not like in your face it's still present um that we shouldn't judge a book by its cover you know what i mean like we say that all the time don't judge somebody before you get to know them don't um think that people just because you've heard things um, does it make it true? You know what I mean? You have to see to believe or believe to see. And that's we, we also learned that in our textbooks. Um, but anyways, I really, really, really enjoyed this book. It it had, like a like I said, a really great villain. It has um, a good moral. Uh, the characters always have a, a good character development throughout the story. And, um, oh, there's chickens. I... I love chickens and I've never like liked chickens as like pets or anything until I started reading these uh, there's this person and I put it in my my Goodreads review which I will also leave the link down below if you wanted to read my um, my written review but there is this author that writes the whole chicken biology like history of chickens there's like over five hundred breeds of chicken so if you really like chickens this one goes a lot more into chickens skunk and badger um there's also chickens in egg marks the spot but not as many but there are still there in the book so if you if you have chickens at home um you could relate maybe you'll like you know like this book a little bit more because it's talking about what you have at home um yeah, I, I really like it. Uh, both of these books talk about things that children might not know. Skunk is a really good cook. He likes to talk about his culinary skills, how he gets things, um, where he gets his recipes, how he gets his ideas. Uh, in this one, it talks about the New Yak Times, how he's really into book reviews. And I'm like, yay, I like to read. So, I mean, Skunk is a really big... Uh, book reader and it just it has all of these things in it you know what I mean it talks about different kinds of muscles different kinds of of rats there's the wharf rat but it was also called something else I, I totally forgot now what no I almost had it um it talks about just <laughs> oh oh and uh my last, my last, last, last cherry on top favorite thing about this book is that 
the chicken talks in box. It goes bark, 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 bark. And you you get to actually like read it out loud. Bark, bark. Like so, I did that for my kids, and they laughed and they thought it was really funny. Um, so yeah, and there's pictures. Uh, this one, you you have like you know little little pictures of some of the story which I really enjoyed. Uh, so again, I want to thank Alga and Quinn for allowing me to read and review this book for you guys and be a part of their book tour. Um, I, I cannot say enough how much I love these stories. And so, yeah. If you guys want the arc for Egg Marks the Spot, if you think your child or maybe your grandchild might really like this book, or even you. If you like middle grade like I do, maybe you'll want this book just to read for yourself. Um, just let me know down below that you want to be entered into the hat, and I will be doing the giveaway uh, next weekend. So I'll give it, I'll let it go for um, a whole week, and I'll pick the winners next Saturday, uh, which I'll leave all that information down below because I can't think of what next Saturday is. Anyways, yes, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, I'm, look forward to, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on what you think about the book. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you soon.